Are you looking for jobs recently and not getting any hits? Are the headhunters and recruiters ghosting you? Have you ever wondered why? Let's find out. Here's some numbers to give you a little context. According to layoffs.fyi, in 2023 alone, there were 260,000 layoffs only in the tech industry. This is just what they attract on their website and through forum posts. But in reality, I'm sure there are likely more layoffs than that. These numbers were 59% higher than it was in 2022. So, is 2024 off to a better start? Well, we are only four months in and the tally is currently trending at 75,000. Frankly, it's not looking good. While there are many factors that impact the job market, one of the major challenges we are having when looking for jobs now is definitely the competition. Competition is not only due to the large pool of candidates, but also the result of lesser jobs in the market because of the economy. It also doesn't help that many of the layoffs has happened in very close proximity to each other. Additionally, when you start looking out for a new job, you will naturally start looking for something that fits your skill set or something that you probably like to do. As you progress, assuming you don't get any hits or success, you become desperate because as you know, life happens, you have to pay bills, you have to put food on the table. So you start to apply for jobs that you may or may not be a best fit for. So what is happening now is that those applying for your role today not only consists of qualified candidates, but also potentially many other desperate candidates just trying to get a job. As a hiring manager myself, recently when I put out a headcount to hire, within hours I will have my inbox flooded with hundreds of applications. It's close to impossible to weed through all these applications. So the question is, how do talent acquisition folks and headhunters filter through these hundreds or thousands of applications and what can you do to improve your chances? The strategy varies from headhunter to headhunter, but I'll share with you a few ways how some are actually filtering out candidates and what we can do to improve our chances. The easiest and most common way is to start filtering candidates as and when it comes into the inbox. As they filter, they will pick say the first five candidates and put it aside for the hiring manager to review. As the hiring manager goes through the first five, they will prep the next suitable five just in case the hiring manager doesn't find any in the first shortlist. Assuming he does find somebody and it progresses, the headhunter will likely stop going through all the other candidates. If the hiring manager doesn't find any, the next five is up and the process repeats itself. How do you know how many candidates have applied for a role? If you're applying and viewing through LinkedIn, it does show the number of applicants that's already applied for the particular job so you can get an idea of how many have actually applied. But just be mindful that this number is only what's been tracked on LinkedIn, and if the company is advertised anywhere else, that number is no longer accurate. You can improve your chances by always being ahead of the game, by being one of the early candidates. An easy way to do this is to actually set up notifications based on the role within LinkedIn, and it will notify you the moment a new job that fits your criteria pops up. This way, you are improving your chances by being the first few candidates in the selection pool. The next strategy that is often used as a filtering mechanism are referrals. In my opinion, this is the best way to jump to the head of the queue. Most HR applications or software usually flags a referral and have these candidates float up to the top of the list of candidates for review. It makes the job of recruiters much easier. There's two things about referral that I want you guys to know about. First, many companies have a preference for referrals because they assume that you will only recommend someone you think that is good fit for a company or the role rather than any random person. Secondly, some companies have a policy that they will have all referrals go through at least one round of interview to assess for fit. Just by that, your chances have already gone up by more than 50%. So the question is, how do you find a referral? When you do see a job on LinkedIn, Click on the logo of the company and under the people tab, you will be able to find people under your connections that work for the company. Reach out to your connections and find out if you can score a referral. By the way, just wanted to slip this in before I forget. If you're enjoying the content and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe or leave me a comment. And finally, to my last big tip. The larger companies and the big names like Google, Facebooks and the likes often get thousands of applications for any role they put out. It's not just from external candidates, but also from internal candidates. 
So the manual method of filtering or even referrals is often overwhelming as it is. In those instances, they bring in the big guns, AI and keyword filtering. They will use these tools to go through all candidate resumes for the specific keyword and fit based on the job. With the addition of AI, it is now even more accurate when it comes to picking out a needle in a haystack. It also means the old school way of writing resumes may not be quite as effective. Because of this, it is time to level up your resume and brush off those cobwebs. First, start by adjusting your resume with the right keywords in relation to the role that you are applying for. Make sure you tailor the application to match it as closely to the requirements. Assuming you are applying to various different roles, a good way to do this is to have yeah, a few versions of your resume ready to go in your toolkit. By doing this, you are reducing the chances of being passed over in the first cut and hopefully improve your chances significantly. The three strategies I shared are by no means the only way candidates are filtered, but definitely some of the most popular ones. The workaround I've shared do not need to be implemented in isolation. You can take all of these three strategies and combine them, and I like to think that you have a significantly up your chances just by doing that. Hopefully, the few tips I've given will help you out, and I wish you all the best. Thanks as always for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next video.